Good afternoon, dear stitching friends. This is Judy Whitman with JBW Designs, and I am broadcasting, if you can call it that, from my home office. And I've tried to get another view today. I wish I had some Christmas decorations up because that side of the room is looking quite bare. But um, I just tried to have you see some, some other side of the room that I'm working in. So I'm kind of limited because I have a, a desktop computer and it only goes in about three places. But thank you for coming back to watch again, and I wanna address a couple things that I forgot to do last week. So last week, our topic happened to be um, the Christmas trees, the Christmas tree collection one through 10. And when I watched it after it was all over with, I realized that I missed one step in that video because I said to you, oh, let me tell you about the finishing, and then I proceeded to forget that altogether. So hopefully I'll make up for that a little bit this week. I have all my little props everywhere on the side here for today's um, session. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about the construction of the trees. And then I'm also going to talk to you about the construction of any small ornament that you're going to assemble. So this is going to be a quick lesson because actually in video number four, I covered some finishing in that that applies to this one. So I think if you're new to this, that you'll need to know that I always start, and I'm not a professional finisher, I have someone do these for me, but I start with a base and I need a piece of board, I use comic board, to cover the backing of the ornament and then another piece that same shape to cover the front of the ornament. And I used fabric glue to, to adhere them. And then I'm going to hand stitch those two pieces together. You can glue them, but sometimes if you glue them, it makes it very difficult to do any hand sewing to put a trim on. So I hand sew those two sides together, and then I'm going to apply some kind of an edging. And the edging can be a pom-pom trim, it can be a ribbon, it can be cording, rickrack, all kinds of things can be used for that. And one little hint is before you attach, put a little um, hanger, a ribbon or a piece of cording up at the top so that you have something between those two layers to hang your ornament. So I want to talk to you a little bit about shapes because I, uh, if you study some of my ornaments, I have lots of different shapes. So I have mittens, and I have stocking shapes, and here's a little one that's a snow globe, and of course the tree, and here's, oops, this one's falling apart a little bit, and the star. So in order to figure out how to make a template for these pieces, I often take my stitch design just up to the window so that I can see through from the back. And I put a piece of tracing paper over that shape. And I do a light drawing of the general shape of the design that I'm working with. And then I use that as my template to cut out the cardboard. So really, you can do it with any shape. You could do it with this half moon shape. It's easy to do with the little uh, stocking shape etc. So that's just a few finishing hints for you. These ones that I held up for you, let me review again. This has ribbon around the edges that's been what's called ruched, so it's twisted and turned and attached. I have to get it up to the right spot here with just a little pin and a bead. I think all the other ones that I showed you today were all done with a twisted cording. A lot of these ornaments that I'm showing to you actually came out of a set of books that I talked about. Oops. <laughs> instead, of, instead of pulling out books one and two, I pu pulled out books two and two. But you get the idea. So I did a couple of uh, collections this year of ornament designs, and they're in spiral bound books. There are 20 ornaments in each book, and these are taken from many publications that I've done over the years. It's easy to use, they're quick to stitch. The ornaments that I just showed you are stitched over one, but of course you can stitch them over two. They'll still be the right size for your, for your tree or they make lovely gifts. So I'm going to set that aside 
and I'm going to tell you about the project that I really wanted to feature this week, and it was one that I actually designed a year ago. And I keep a running list, a notebook with ideas of things that I want to design for the next releases, and this has been on my list for so long, or it had been on my list for so long, and it was the 12 days of Christmas. And somehow last year I was inspired to start it, and I'm going to show you first the finished, um, the whole project finished as 12 separate ornaments, and then I'm going to show you each of the books because they come from four separate books with three ornaments in each book. So this might be a little awkward. In fact, I think I'll back up a little bit here so you can see it. But I took the 12 Days of Christmas ornaments, and I'll back this up a little bit, and I mounted it on a window that I happened to buy at Hobby Lobby. And they're just hung from little plastic hooks that you can secure to the glass. And I'll show you each ornament because they're kind of fun to see what they look like close up. So that was my big project for last year. It actually took quite a few months to complete the whole set of 12. So I'm going to take these off my window, and this might be a little awkward here, well, bear with me, because one, two, and three, all right, our next set, and the last set. So I want to show you these up close, and I'll set that down here. I tried a different chair today because my other chair seems to be so low. So this is what the designs look, look, look like up close. So we have the partridge in a pear tree. We have the two turtle doves. And then we have the three French hens. And to do these finishings, I just traced them and made a circle and did just what I talked about before. I covered the front of my first board with my linen and the design, and I covered the back with the backing fabric. And then I put a little hanger at the top and a ribbon and a bead at the bottom. And that particular book looks like this. And in each one of these designs, I've used a charm. So when I package the books, if they're sold to shops, um, I include the charms with the design. And <clears throat> I'll show you real quickly. These are a trifold design. So we've got all three in one. And then the picture of this. Let's see, does it show the overall? I'm not sure. I'll have to look at the, to see if I ever photographed the whole thing for you. So that was book number one. And let me set those aside. So then book number two um, <clears throat> includes four calling birds and five golden rings. I have to remember to take my time here. I tend to go like 100 miles an hour. And then the last one is uh, the six geese laying. So that's all in book number two. And you can see that this one has a star charm. This one has beads and a heart charm, and this one had a little, a little dove at the bottom. And that booklet looks like this. Let me get that up close so you can see. And again, it's a trifold, so all three designs are in one. All right, now moving on to book three. Uh, let's see. We have... These were really fun to design, actually, once I got started. Uh, seven Swans of Swimming, which has a tiny little swan on it. And Eight Maids a Milking, and our little cow has a bell. And then Nine Ladies Dancing has ballet shoes. And I have to admit that some of these were quite tricky to design, because if you think about the stitch count, I mean, this little ballerina is only probably... 16 to 18 inches high. So getting her to look like a dancer in that small uh, a motif is quite challenging. And when I design, I have many, many um, tries to get it to the point where I really like the way it looks. And that's true with all the designs. So this is book number three. You can see all three on that. 
And then the last in this set, let's see, our, um, our Ten Lords of Leaping, and that has a little uh, star at the top. And then Eleven Pipers Piping, our Ten Lords kind of disappeared quickly. And he has a little horn. And then the last one is the Twelve Drummers Drumming, and that has a little note with it. And this has beads used in the background of that, so you can see a little shine to it, so you can see what the back looks like. So I'm sure you have not a minute to spare to stitch this year for Christmas. You're probably overwhelmed, but maybe put this on your to-do list for next year. It might be kind of a fun project, maybe tackle one a month. Um, they're actually fairly quick to stitch, believe it or not. And then when I did the finishing, I set up an assembly line because um, it's easier to do 12 and get all the circles covered, assemble them, etc. So, all right. So that was my number one thing that I wanted to show you this week. I also want to share with you some of my um, pillows that I think I've shown to you before, but it's worth looking at them again because we're running out of time to, to review Christmas things. And these are pillows that I've designed over the years. They're, um, these particular models I'm going to show you today have all been worked over one. And I have four different designs that I've actually kitted a finishing kit for. And um, some of the fabrics are very hard to find, so I have very limited quantities if you're interested. I don't sell the finishing kits to shops because I can't produce enough of them. And some of the ribbons that were on the original are no longer, I'm no longer able to find, and so sometimes I have to substitute something. But let me show you what this one looks like. So, Oh Christmas Tree has a finishing kit for the over one, and it has all the ribbons and the trims and the buttons, etc., and the directions on how to assemble that. So that's one of the finishing kits that I offer. And then let's see, here's another one. Uh, this is Joy Noel. And that finishing kit looks like this. And you can see all the trims on the inside. And these run about $16 a piece. I think they might vary actually in price, um, depending on what's inside the kit. So this was another one that I did a couple years ago called Tidings of Joy, and I have the finishing kit for that. This was the ribbon, actually, that I was no longer able to find. It was from a company called French General, and they no longer produce that ribbon. So I have substituted something that's equally as, as cute with little hearts on it. And then the last one, which was new this year, was the um, Nordic Reindeer design. And so this is the finishing kit for that. And as you can see, there's, there's all the instructions on how to assemble it. And here's what the design looks like finished. So I thought you might get a kick out of seeing some of those. If you're interested in any of those, just email me. Um, that's the best way to reach me, and it's judy at jbwdesigns.com. So let's see, what else is on my list? Um, I've shown you this before, but I thought you might want to see it again so you can see it up close. I, I designed a series this year of books called French Country Tags. I forgot to bring that book over here. And so there are three designs in that booklet. I'll have to show it to you next week. And these are the ones that are worked over one, and they're mounted on the small tags. And then I've also worked them over two, and the, obviously the tag is probably about an inch or so higher, and it's wider. But what I wanted to share with you is that there are other designs that I have that would fit on these small wooden tags. And incidentally, they're made in France. I think I may have told you this before. They're just adorable. I love it when I get my package from France. It seems like a miracle. And if you can see up close, each one is laser cut. And these are little stars that run along the edges, the top edges. So what I wanted to tell you is that my designs for sleds, and I have, I think, four different sled design books, all of these are narrow enough that they would fit on the tags too. 
So you could think about, let's see, this was little green sleds that just came out this year. So you can see that the little gingerbread man would fit on the small tag. This is over one. And then the little stocking with the bear that would also fit on this little tag. So just some food for thought going forward. As I say, I know you're swamped. We all are so, so busy with Christmas prep, although I'm not sure about your family. I'm not sure how we're going to gather this year. It's just a real, real concern for everyone. Um, last week, I had a contest, and I actually didn't get that many responses, but that's okay. What I asked is, how does stitching enhance your life? Because I had a model to give away. And I think I threw away my notes here. Let me look at them again. So some of the responses were so, so sweet. Um, they want, Several people talked about the calming aspects of stitching, which I feel always, how it's relaxing, how it causes us to slow down. Um, one of the gals said it kept her from baking. So she's busy stitching. She's not baking, especially during the pandemic. Several talked about helping with anxiety. Uh, one gal said that she was going through radiation and chemo and that the uh, stitching was a lifesaver for her. And I thought, oh, I'm sure that's true for so many because this is such a hard time in, in our lives, something we've never gone through before. So our winner of our contest this week is Kathy Meller, M-E-L-L-O-R. And Kathy, if you will email me your address, I will be sending you my Stitch Well and Be Calm uh, free I'll send you the model, but there is a free chart on my website for this. So let's see what else is on my list. Uh, I am terrible at, after the video finishes, at trying to figure out all the next steps. So I have this long list of how to do it. And one thing that I seem to be failing at is um, putting a link from my video onto my Instagram account and my Friends of JBW Designs page and Facebook. I don't know why I can't get that straight. So if you don't see a link, you'll know, you'll know why. Hopefully one day I will master this. We'll keep our fingers crossed. So I want to thank you so much for watching the video, uh, for subscribing, and please make comments and ask questions because I'd love... I love hearing from you. And don't forget to look at my Friends of JBW Designs Facebook page because every week I post a contest and I, I photograph three models. I ask the viewers to um, vote for their favorite and then using a random number generator, I choose one person out of that list and I send them all three books. So thanks so much for joining me again this week. Um, it's been a joy to have you as part of my life in this unique way I never thought I would do, but who knew what would happen, right? So until next week, thanks again and goodbye.